Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly. Holy cow. And I think I'm actually going to be podcast eligible now. This is not 9.1. It's not a 9. It's not a 1. It is 4.3, and I am thrilled to be podcasting again. We're going to talk about the types of bonding, a little bit of metal, um, electron activity values and polarity, ionic properties. Really, this is focusing on ionic. A little bit of covalent properties, and let's hop right into it. Bonds form to lower energy. Forming bonds releases energy, often in the form of heat. Most things are compounds because bonds are lower energy. What is favorite, high energy or low energy? Well, you know what I'm going to ask you. Here's a little baby. Oh, baby. Do babies like low energy? rock a babe. Or high energy? Ah. Remember, don't ever shake babies. Even the first time, it causes brain damage and death. Never, never, never shake a baby. But low energy, rock a baby. Favorite. So if you can make bonds, you're going to release that energy. Metallic bonding. Did I go to one once? I I did. Nope. Metallic bonding. Metals bonded to other metals or themselves. So, for example, aluminum bonded to another atom of aluminum would have metallic bonding. Or aluminum bonded to zinc would have metallic bonding. They do not form compounds. They're called alloys. Metallic bonding occurs through non-directional covalent bonds. So, and it's a sea of electrons. Let me show you a picture of this. So this electron from this gold kind of goes, oh, and it's all over the place. Okay? So because this electron is, oh, 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 it's all over the place. Why would they ever stay here? Now, the reason why they would stay here is because these negative electrons, look, I'm negative, are, have positive electrons that they love. I love you. So it's like a party where um, the girls go wandering around looking for someone better. Oh, look, he's kind of interesting. Yeah, but this guy's got to be better. And the guys, the dumb guys, they're, oh, I hope another girl comes and talks to me. And that's about it. So the positives like the negatives, and the negatives like the positives. This sample right here, B, shows the conductivity. If I have a huge negative charge, these little guys are electrons. They're going to be pushed away, and they're going to be attracted towards the positive. Okay? Conductivity of heat. Heat is motion. Notice as the electrons have freedom of motion, and they can do that. And if I take a hammer and smack it, Notice these yellow nuclei still want to stay close together because they're surrounded by all the wonderful negative guys there. Ionic and covalent bonds are sorted by electronegativity. You'll get an electronegativity periodic table as we go through it. Electronegativity is the ability to attract a bonded electron. Hey, I remember that. If an atom is very electronegative, it pulls the electron all the way off of the other atom. This is an ionic bond. Ionic bonds trade electrons. Ionic bonds trade electrons. If an atom's electronegativity is about equal to what is bonded to, the electron is evenly shared. That's covalent. Co means, aw, share. And valence means you're sharing your outermost electron. Ionic to covalent is a continuum. So ionic character increases where this is pretty much a trade, and this is pretty much a communist sharing. Zero to point four is nonpolar, point five two point oh is polar, above two point oh is ionic. What's N to O? N to O is point five. Well, what is that? Hey, that's polar. What about S I to C L? S I is one point eight, chlorine is three point oh. That difference is one point two. Hey, that's polar. What is F to F? Well, four point oh minus four point oh is zero. That's nonpolar. What about lead to fluoride? Lead, lead one point eight, fluoride is four point oh, that's two point two. Hey, that's ionic, and you get the idea. Ionic bonds have really high bonding energies, so that means it takes a lot of energy to break them. Strong. Reflected in high melting temperatures and high boiling temperatures. And boil. They're generally hard and brittle, because once you break that bond, it can't adjust like a metal can. They're electrical and thermal insulators because they don't move. Remember, electrical means you can move your ions, and thermal means you can move your particles, but they're locked in place. They conduct electricity as a liquid only, or aqueous. Because remember, ionic bonds have ions in them, positive and negative, and electricity is a flow of charges. It's a metal and non-metal bonded together, and electrons are said to trade it. Ionic compounds are often soluble. There's a list of solubility rules that you get in class. If positive ions are more attracted to a negative ion than water, it will not dissolve. 
but lots of water means many small bonds. So notice here this chlorine has a very strong bond and a very strong bond, but here's a bunch of them. So would you rather have one strong bond of sodium or like take quadruplets who aren't quite as good looking, say Amy Roberts, to um, homecoming? Ionic bonds form formula units, which is a repeating structure. Notice how you can just stack these over and over again. They're not exact molecules. Lewis dots for ionic bonds. So magnesium on the periodic table. Magnesium's right here. It has two valence electrons, dot and dot. Mg plus two loses two dots. All it is is plus two. Oxygen has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygen minus two would just have one, two, three, four. Sodium has one valence electron. Sodium plus one has nothing. Nitrogen is in the fifth column. Again, the periodic table tells us the number of valence electrons. N minus three would have eight. Whoops, I think I messed up on my oxygen by not giving it eight. So what happens O basically has the six, I'm sorry, has the eight, and these are attracted to each other because positive two and minus two. This one basically has none. So this is negative three, positive one, and they're attracted by those charges. Review. Metals have an electron C that describes all of their properties. Covalent shares electrons. Ionic trades electrons. And properties determine the rest of this. I think I'm going to actually be able to podcast happily again. So I have, I guess I get to talk with my formula unit song again. Toodles. <laughs>